So welcome everybody and this is the eight steps to a successful transformation. Now there's a lot of reasons why I designed this particular program and I'm going to tell you a little bit about its background and how it came to be. So when I first started training with Richard Bandler and Paul McKenna, um, I would see people do sort of uh, interventions where they would fix one thing. And that one thing would make a lot of change in that moment. But inevitably what I would see, and especially I'd see this with my clients and I see this with a lot of my students, is that in time things would sort of come to fall apart in, in some way or another. And therefore some more intervention was needed and some more intervention and some more. And what I started to notice was patterns. And I realized that when people have real things that they want to change, it works better when you have a systematic process that addresses all the things that will inevitably come to um, come to haunt them, so to speak. And this is where the, sex, uh, the, the, the transformational program came out, because I sat and I looked at the whole holistic view of what needs to happen for somebody to have a successful breakthrough, a successful transformation. And this is what I came to uh, see. And, and this is what I've been trying and testing for many years. And I have fine tuned it to this particular program and I'll be getting fantastic results with it. So welcome tonight. I'm really, really excited to be sharing this with you. So we're going to begin with this and um, I just want to put the timer on so that I don't uh, go over time. And yes, let's start. So welcome. Now, the first thing that people ask me is, well, who is this program for? Who does it actually address? And to be honest, it addresses anybody who has some or other kind of limitation, some or other thing that is stopping them from working as effective as they would like to, that stops them from um, having the life that they want, uh, from stops them from going from mediocre to excellent, from stops them from being as happy as they want or less stress in their lives. So this is a program that addresses anybody who wants more out of life, who is understands that it's you know it's possible you can get something more but they just don't know how and they, they they don't know where to start so if you think about when we start life we are young we we in, in fact when we are born we're very naive we're very innocent and for the first say two three years of our lives everything is wonderful we think we are the center of the universe we're happy we feel supported we feel nurtured we feel loved and this is for most of us and i do appreciate there are some situations out there that are not quite as ideal but just on average most little people you know two to three year olds um feel great and they don't have these inadequacies inside of them that say i'm not good enough they don't go out thinking, oh, is my pram as good as the person next door? Or is my bum looking too big in this nappy? Is my hair okay? Are my teeth straight? Um, am I pretty enough? Am I tall enough? They don't have these limitations inside of them. But interestingly enough, you notice that as people grow up, they start to have thoughts about themselves that stop them from living the life that they want. They start to think differently about the, who they are. And these things come from being you know a, a toddler to being a child to the way that life comes to the way that you accept things to the way that um, you receive information and the way that you interpret remember that when you're first born life has no meaning and you can actually see this in babies when you look at them they'll see something and there's just no expression on their face because they don't know what it is they don't know what it does they don't know what to think about it or feel about it and therefore they dismiss it and it's only when they start to gather information through experiences and then they've got a point of reference and therefore they can attach meaning to something that things start to mean something. So by the time we get to childhood, we are already pretty much formed in a lot of our values and our belief systems. And then life starts to um, play itself out in a way to prove things right. So if you have a belief that you uh, are not very confident um, certain circumstances in your life are going to be more highlighted. So by the time you get to be an adult, these things become problems. And the interesting thing is, is that you'll see that children will have a certain lifestyle, certain beliefs, certain experiences. They then become teenagers within those things start to play out more and more. And then they're going to become young adults and then into adulthood and full adulthood. And it's only when they are making decisions for their lives and when they have to pay their own rent and cook their own food and wash their own clothes, that suddenly all these things that have happened start to play out. 
Now, I know that in some ways I'm focusing on the negative things, and I just want to make it clear that this works equally on the positive side of things, that we learn a lot of things and give us resources to be able to handle life and to be resilient. But I want to focus on the things that stop us from living the life that we want. There's been far too many times that I have gone, uh, for instance, like I used to go to Canary Walk and just stop and talk to people and ask them about their work, about their life and about whether they're happy. And most people would say to me that they're actually not happy but they feel trapped in where they are because they've got mortgages and uh, obligations and rentals and things like that to pay. And therefore they felt like they had no choice. And the, 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 the idea that you've got no choice and that you're stuck and therefore you have to make the best out of a bad situation, it's just a thought that you can't do something different. And these thoughts come from, uh, from our childhood. So when I'm looking at this particular program, um, this is what I was looking at, is how can we change that? How can we change those thoughts so that we can start to behave in a different way to start to get the life that we want? So before I get into more detail about the program, let me give you a little bit of background as to who I am and how did I get to understand and to do this kind of work. So my name is Vicky Ross and I'm actually uh, half Greek and half Dutch. So my maiden name was Vicky Macropolis, and this is what I've grown up until I got married. Um, I've come from a Greek father and a Dutch mom. I was born in Tanzania. I then lived in Kenya. I then lived in Greece, and then I lived in South Africa, which is why I've got a South African accent. Um, I got to South Africa when I was 10 years old, and I learned to speak English there. I um, lived in South Africa for about 23 years. Then we left South Africa um, a little after I got married to my husband. We lived for a year in Holland. Things didn't work out for us there, and we crossed over the pond, and we've been in the UK now for 14 years. Um, in my sort of path in life, uh, my parents got divorced when I was 14, and I know I'm not unique in this, and I'm not the only child that comes from a divorced home. But what happened to me uniquely was that I, I couldn't make sense out of the nonsense of my life. It didn't make sense to me that my parents, who when we went out to family dues, seemed happy, just like everybody else. And when we went home, my parents would fight and life would be quite volatile at times. And um, I thought, well, everybody's life is like that, because when we go out, everybody else seems as happy as my parents. So when my parents came and told me they were getting divorced, I was kind of in shock. I couldn't understand, well, why would my parents want to get divorced? But what followed after that um, came, became even, you know, sort of more unsettled, if you like. And I remember thinking to myself, why is this happening to me? What have I done? How, how am I part of this? And I would see other girls in my school and I would think, well, why is that not happening to them? Why have I got this? What, what is this all about? You know I mean, there has to be more to life than all the, the nonsense that's going on in my life. You know, everybody's worrying about boyfriends and makeup and all of this. And I was just worrying about what was going on at home. Um, so it, it was quite unsettled. And that started me off at a very young age, uh, reading and trying to make sense of the, out of the nonsense into spirituality and uh, psychology, sociology, that kind of stuff. I was just reading it on and off from when I was 14. But of course, like everything else, when I got into my inverted brackets adult years, and this is where the problems really start to manifest themselves because now I had to make decisions and my decisions were all based from the way that I believed, the things I believed in life, the things I believed about myself, what I was capable of, what, what I deserved, what I valued. And I very, very quickly made some really big mistakes that shocked me, but it also made me step back and uh, look at my life. And the biggest pivoting point that I had is that I got married to an Australian, um, an Australian Greek. I went to Australia and it was just a disaster of a, of a marriage for all reasons. And it made me step back and go, what am I doing? And what is happening here? And why is this happening? And this is where my real journey to personal development uh, actually started. So I came back to South Africa and really, really got into the books. And I, I did a lot of what everybody says, you know, if you do this, you'll feel fine. And I did this and I felt fine for six months and then I wasn't feeling fine so then I thought okay there's a little bit more to the problems so if I do this then I'll feel fine and I felt fine for two years and then I wasn't fine again and 
in and it's through this whole sort of journey that I got to understand what it is like to to go through transformations, what has to happen, what do you have to do to support yourself, and what do you have to do to stay accountable. So in part of my journey um, in working, I did all sorts of courses, you, you name it, I did it, and I worked for South African Airways, and I did a lot of behavioral things there, I did a lot of my corporate training, so I've got a very strong business training background. Um, but I got to work with masters of this field, like co-creator of NLP, Dr. Richard Bandler, Paul McKenna, Michael Neal, and, and that's just to name a few. And in, when I did my master practitioner, Paul asked me to become an assistant for Richard Bandler himself. And of course I accepted. And in becoming an assistant and doing one master pra uh, practitioner, master practitioner after the other, gave me the platform to really watch these masters in work and to model them and to understand how to develop people. So it gave me that depth. So as a result of that, I've written my own book that is called I Understand Me, and it does exactly what it says on the tin. And it's uh, basically what I was looking at is how to help people in a jargon-free way to change the thoughts and beliefs so they can be happy. Because the biggest thing that I see with my clients over and over again is unhappiness. They have beliefs about themselves that stop them from living the best life and stop them from enjoying life and, and, and becoming the best that they can. Um, through my trainings and all my the writings, I also developed a lot of business trainings because I see a lot of unhappiness within companies and within teams and managers and teams. And therefore, I know that a lot of the behavioral things can help you know, take away that sort of uh, frustration and that lack of productivity and to raise performance. So I've trained over 5,000 people in eight different countries and um, still do that. Uh, and, it's, and it's been an absolute, absolute uh, joy for me to work with people and even get the cynics, which is my best, and see the transformations in them. So let's start to talk about what this process that I've come up with and what I saw and what I've experienced. So let's start up this eight step to the transformational um, journey. So the very first step, the very first thing that anybody would have to do is to address who they are. And this is about understanding what is your story, because we all have a story. We are all authors of our lives. And you often will hear people say, oh, you know, if only I could tell my story, my story is just so big. We all have that story. And you know what? This is the story that supports all the things that you have about why you can't do something. So you have a story about your childhood, about how you were born, where were you born, what was going on with your family, what was going on in the world. And I've heard people say, oh, I was born in the war, or I was born just before the war, so you know we didn't have food, or I was born just after the war and there was just so much going on. I was born in the hippie age and this was happening. So people have a story about themselves, about where they were born, and it's significant because people will use those stories as to understand and explain why they are who they are. So we look at you know your childhood, we look at your teenage years and what goes on, and we look at your adult life. Because all of these things create who you are. And I think in some ways and on some level, that's obvious. But it is so interesting when I sit with people and work with people and I make the obvious, really obvious, that they go, gosh, I've never thought of that. So it's very important that you look at your story from just a point of view of this is interesting. This is my life. And at, at what any time, we can focus on certain parts of our story. If I had to ask you, what is it that your story is about that makes you so good at this? You'll be able to tell me your story and focus on all the things that supported you in order to be good at whatever that is. But if you can't do something, I'll say, well, what is the story of your life? How have you grown up that you can't do this? And your story will change to the focus of that. So it's interesting when people don't know what I'm looking for and I ask them, what is their story? What that focus that they give me is. Because then I'm able to see what internal focus they've got. Because that focus that they have on the inside is how they project themselves on the outside. So out of the story, which is just thoughts that we have about what's happened, memories are just thoughts, but not real things any longer. The things that have happened, and we store a memory of those events in our minds through our filters. 
So it might not even be the true event. It might be just what we think happened. And you can sometimes check that to see that it's true. When two siblings or two friends recall a story from the past and the one will say, no, 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 that's not how it happened. This, it happened this way. And somebody else will go, no, 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 that didn't happen this way. It happened this So you can see that two people experienced something in the past and they've each got a different memory of that. So we have our own unique memory, our own perception of what happened in a particular time. And that makes us feel a certain way. And the reason we have that is because our brain can't tell the difference between reality and fantasy. If we're reading a book, we can feel the emotions that the book projects. Now, the reality is, is that all that's happening is you're holding a piece of paper with lots of words on it. There is nothing else going around. If you're reading a story about a, a tragic uh, love story of, of something, you know, that's not really happening. It's just words on paper. But your mind is so capable of creating the full picture, the image, the motions, the music even, that it conjures up feelings inside of us. And therefore, it can make us feel you know, sad or it can make us cry or it can make us happy. And that's because the brain can't tell the difference. So that's an important factor. When you sit and think about what is your story and who you are, what kind of feelings do your memories create about you? Because if you have feelings about yourself that are inadequate, but now you're going to work and you have to sort of be confident or you have to sort of show that you're okay, you'll put a mask on to show the world that you're okay. So you'll put this mask and you'll pretend I'm okay, I'm confident, I'm coping. And I cannot tell you how many times I've heard my clients come to me and say to me, I can't cope anymore. Uh, you know, the stress is just so high because I'm so scared that people are going to see how insecure I am inside, how I feel inadequate, how I feel like I can't, uh, I can't do this. Uh, I don't even know how I've managed to keep up this far, but, but it's just, you know, I'm really, really starting to struggle. So what we tend to do unconsciously is that we pretend to the world that we are something else. Now, this is where I see the stress, is that we have a thought about who we are, and then we have this mask on top that pretends of who we think the world wants us to be. The gap between the, the thought, the mask of who we are and the mask of what we show the world, the bigger the gap, the bigger the stress. So you need to ask yourself, how far apart are those two images? Who you are and what you're showing the world. The further apart they are, the bigger the stress in your life. So it's important that you start to understand what it is that you're showing the world. Now, I don't really have a problem with masks. Masks are okay because sometimes they're useful for us as long as we're doing them consciously. So if you need to show that you're okay, so say for instance, there's a lot of stress at home, but it's not appropriate for you to express that outside. It's okay to wear a mask, but as long as you're doing it knowingly. So that is where the big difference comes about wearing a mask and knowing what it's all about. So now that you know a little bit more about what is the story that you tell yourself about why you can't achieve something or why you can't do something, and you've become aware of the masks that you wear, the next step is to start to dream. Now, a lot of the people that I work with won't dream because they say, what's the point? I can't achieve this anyway. Or I, ha you know, I have a dream, but I just think about it and then I just feel sad because I can't get there. I don't have what it takes. I don't have the resources. Or I don't have this. Or I don't have that. Because they have a belief about themselves that says that they can't do it. And therefore, they, you know, they don't go any further. And this is part of the thing. And this is why the transformational journey is important. Is because when you start to break the things that supported a limited life, you need to start building new dreams, new goals. So it's really important that right up front, you start to dream again, to dream a dream and ask yourself if everything was possible. And if I could pretend, if instead of pretending that I'm not good enough, if I could pretend that I'm brilliant and I'm wonderful and I can get everything and anything that I want, what would I do? Who would I be? What would I want to achieve? Because we all have a goal, and the big thing is that we want to hit that goal. So second thing is to really sit down and think about what are the things that you want to do? What are the dreams? Now, sometimes people say, well, it's ridiculous. Dreams are dreams, and you know, you can't achieve all dreams, and I agree. But until you dream, you can't get a goal. 
So the big thing that you need to do here is start to dream, start to think about things and then start to write this down and start to ask yourself, what if any of these dreams do I want to create? Which one? Which one seems to work? Which one is juicy and wonderful and, oh, I really want this. But the dream is a little bit of a dress rehearsal. We can sit and daydream and think about things. And then after a while we go, nah, I don't really want to do that. But every now and then we get this dream and we think, oh, we love to do that. And that is the one that we need to start looking at and making it into a goal. So once we've had those dreams and we've got the goal, that next step that anybody would do with me is you've got to start planning. You know, there's that famous saying, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So without planning, you're not going to get anywhere. And I hear some of my clients will say, well, you know, I, quite, I kind of like to work organically around things and, and, you know, just let things happen. Well, you know, I've seen people and sometimes I'm even guilty of that, where you work organically and you're going to be really, really busy doing nothing or doing a lot of things, but not achieving the things that make a big difference. So it's really important that you plan and, you know, really work out what is it that you want to do? What is it that you want to achieve? And when you've planned something, you need to connect. It's one of the key things. I've seen people come and do coaching sessions with their goals and they haven't planned it. And then you, you see them again and nothing's happened because they haven't planned. And then I've seen people who have planned and they're kind of moving along the path and they're kind of getting there, but not quite. And I sat back and I looked and I thought, what is missing here? And I, what I realized what makes it really powerful, any dream becoming a goal makes it really powerful is when you connect to that goal. So connecting to that goal is when that goal becomes so much bigger than you. It's almost like it's your mission, it's your crusade. It's that thing that really has to happen. It's that thing that if you don't achieve it, it doesn't affect only you, it affects others. So one of my dreams for many years, and I would easily say about 20 years, was to be an author, to be, a, a, you know, to write. And all the time I think, oh, I'd love to just be an author and to have a book. And what would I write about? And I don't know what I'd write about, but I really would like to do that. That was a dream of mine. And only recently I started to work with a, a fantastic author coach, Will Thomas, and he helped me plan my book. And the minute he did that, it was so easy. But then, of course, I could always turn around and go, oh, I don't feel like writing today. Oh, I'm feeling a bit lazy. I'm not going to write today. And then I connect to this goal. And suddenly this book wasn't just about me becoming an author. This book was about educating people and helping them get to a state of understanding of themselves where they can start to feel better. So connection is absolutely key to the goal. And another thing that has to happen with a goal, you've got to be passionate about it. You've got to love it. Because if you don't love it, it becomes a drag. It becomes a chore. It becomes, oh, I've got to get out of bed and do this. So you've got to really, really love what you do. You've got to be able to just get out of bed and just do it. And if you have to work till midnight, then you work till midnight because you love it. You love what it does. You love the way it makes you feel. You love the way it serves other people. So you've got to be really passionate. And the thing, if you're passionate about something, you will naturally become an expert. Because when you're passionate about something, you will research the subject, you will read about it, you will write about it, you'll teach others about it. And that's how you become an expert, by engaging in all the different modalities on, on how to, to develop something. You've got to read things, listen to things, talk about them, write about them, you know, just, it, it, just do everything. And of course, teach as well. And with everything else, you've also got to have balance in your life. And that's really important in, in when you're creating transformations is that you've got to balance your life because so many times people will move from one area and so emerge themselves into something else that they don't actually uh, develop anything else. So it's important that you look at your family, your work, your career. And balance doesn't mean equal amount of hours. It just means that you have made sure that all other areas are taken care of in the right way, in the right amount, so that everybody's happy and everything is, is flowing. So now we know what our story is, we, we know what our dreams and our goals are, we've planned them, we connect them. The next part of any transformation is to ask yourself, what am I putting into life? Because on to some level, to come this far, 
it's, it's a lot of cognitive stuff. It's a lot of thinking stuff. But life works on energy. It's the energy that we put out and the energy that we take in that makes us do and makes us be the way that we are. So it's really important to see what are you putting in life. Now, let me give it to you in a very simple example. We see the juice extractor here. Now, if I put the apples in there, do I ever believe or think that orange juice is going to come out? And the simple answer is no. You'll always get apple juice. And we don't question that. If I put apples in, I'll get apple juice. If I get or put oranges in, I'll get orange juice. But here's what people do in their lives. They'll put anxiety, stress, a little sleep, bad eating, negative thoughts. And then what they get out of their lives is stress, anxiety, fatigue, unhealthy bodies, lack of success. And they wonder why I'm not getting what I want. I put all this effort in. I stress over the effort that I put in. I, I lose sleep because I'm trying to work so hard. Um, I've, I've skipped meals because I forgot to eat because I'm working and I'm, and I'm traveling and all of this. Why am I not being successful? Why am I not getting out of life what I'm putting in? And actually, you're getting out of life what you're putting in. So you've got to step back and ask yourself energetically, emotionally, what are you putting into life? So it doesn't mean that if you put a lot of work in and you, you do sometimes burn the midnight oil that you're not going to get success out. But you've got to do it with an energy of success, with, a, with an energy of it's okay. Not with that energy of, oh my God, I don't know what to do. I can't cope with this. Because otherwise, it's, it's not going to work. And a lot of the energy starts with you. You've got to understand that what we see on the outside underneath is governed by the mental. In other words, what you think spiritual what you believe your your your, your spiritual sort of sense and self-worth and then of course your emotional how do you feel about yourself because those three things when you see somebody walking in the street without even talking to them or if you meet somebody at a network event for instance you can feel how they think about themselves you can feel whether they've got integrity whether they actually um, humble, whether they sort of considerate of others, you can feel how they feel about themselves, if they're nervous or confident, if they're bored, if they're curious, if they're excited, if they love what they do, you can feel those things. If you just become a little bit more consciously aware in that moment. So when we look at behavior, and when you look at your behavior and the energy that you're putting into your life, you've got to think about those three things. What am I putting into my life? Because that will give you the clues to be able to start balancing and creating transformations that are successful. And of course, you've got to love yourself. How many times have you heard somebody say, when I lose weight, I will like how I look. When I get this degree, then I know I can be successful. When I do this, when I find a husband or a wife, then I'll be happy. When I can do this, then I will do that. It's the, it's the cause and effect kind of thing that happens. And people wait for things to happen before they can love themselves, before they can be happy, before they can feel successful. And you've got to start it the other way around. And I think it's Wayne Dwyer that says, you've got to believe it to see it. Which most, most people say, I want to see it to believe it. It's got to start with you, with what's going on inside of you. So the next thing, now that we're looking at what we're putting into life, we also need to, you, you need to start looking at what's going on emotionally. And you've got to become emotionally smart. Now, emotions are just messengers and they're feelings in motion. And for most of us, we've been taught to just deny the emotions. If you're feeling bad, we were taught to just buck up. Come on, step up. Come, put a smile on your face. What's this all about? What's the reason? You haven't got a reason to, to feel unhappy. So we're told that to be unhappy, to be angry, to feel anxiety is not appropriate. And therefore, we need to suppress it. We need to get rid of it. Or sometimes we just don't like the way it feels in ourselves. We don't know what to do about it. And therefore, we just try and suppress it. I've also seen people, uh, and, and earlier times I would do it as well, where you, you find techniques on how to overcome anger and techniques on how to overcome anxiety and techniques on how to get over stress. But getting over it does not solve it. I want you to think about your emotions in a slightly different way. Imagine that there's a leak in your ceiling 
and it's dripping now on the floor. And if you leave it, it's going to flood the floor. And then other your wooden floors or your carpet or whatever you've got is going to get ruined. And that's going to cause a bigger mess. So what you do is you go and get a nice big bucket and you stick it underneath and you think, okay, this will catch all the water and that's fine. And you know what? As long as that bucket doesn't overflow, you'll be fine. You'll be okay. You know, you, you, you've got it under control. But the minute that that bucket overflows, you now need to pull that away and get another bucket and empty this one. And you have to wait. So part of that solution is you can't go anywhere. You have to wait around all day and try and solve this, you know, to catch the next bucket. But the real, you know, sort of solution to this is to actually go inside the roof and find where the leak is and stop it from there so it doesn't leak through your roof. And the emotions are the same thing. Just learning how to overcome anxiety or stress or anger is the bucket kind of syndrome. You've got to find out what is this about? Why am I getting anxious? What is my anxiety about? Why am I getting angry? What is my anger about? Because when we get angry, what anger is all about is when we have an expectation about someone or something to behave in a certain way and they don't. So let's just say you didn't manage to get to the post office and you've got an important document that needs to be posted. So you ask someone, um, a partner or a colleague or someone that you trust uh, to go and post that. But you didn't say to them, this is really, really important and it has to go today. So please make sure that it's gone. You just say, can you please post this for me? And they go, yeah, yeah, put it here, I'll do it. So when you come back, you say, did you post my letter? Oh, I'm sorry, I was so inundated with work, I forgot. And you get angry because it was so important and now it was something crucial that you left till the last minute and then you didn't get to post it and then you ask somebody else and now they haven't posted and now there's going to be trouble and you know, whatever, whatever. So you have an expectation that this person will take this serious enough and fulfill their promise and they didn't. So they've let you down. Now, the question to ask yourself in that moment is, did that person actually know that that was important? Did they, did you tell them, did you make it clear? When we have expectations about how somebody will behave, we often don't actually tell them what we expect. So sometimes people expect others to behave in a certain way. And when they don't, they get angry. It's the same thing if you book a holiday and your expectation is that it will be X, Y, Z. And when you get there, it doesn't meet your expectation. We'll get angry. So anger is all about that. So when you, get, when you understand what anger is about, when you get angry, you can go, whoa, stop. What's my expectation here? Is it realistic? Is it justified? And even if it's justified, is it worth it? Because the chemical input that you're putting into your body is toxic. And therefore, even if you're right, and even if um, getting angry is appropriate in that moment, is it worth it? And my answer is always no. So some of the other emotions are anxiety. Anxiety is an emotion of the future. When we, when we worry about something in the future, we need to ask ourselves, do we actually know with certainty that something's going to happen, that we worry about it. And the truth is, no, we don't. And if we have a glimpse because of experience, we can always say, well, if that would happen, what can I do? What can I put in place so that I can prevent something going wrong? Instead of just worrying about it. But because most of us don't actually consciously go, I'm being anxious right now. Anxiety is an emotion of the future. What am I being anxious about? And actually deal with it they just suppress it and it doesn't go away. Emotions are like little children. They are unconscious messengers from our unconscious mind saying, hey, listen to me. And only when you pay attention and deal with it will they go away. So part of your transformational journey is getting to understand your emotions and getting to have skills and tools to help you so that you can overcome them and become resilient. Of course, the biggest thing that people ask me is, can you help me be confident? in one shape or another. And confidence is something that a lot of people look for. And they, they'll say to me exactly, you know, what's going on at work or what's going on in the house or wherever it may be that they lack it. So if you think about it, if you want confidence, it presupposes you don't have it. So if you don't have confidence, what are you feeling in that moment? And most people don't actually know because you haven't thought about it. People just feel frozen in what that emotion is. And that emotion is fear. So for instance, when people want confidence to do public speaking, they're scared. They're so scared to go up on that podium and just speak. 
or in front of the stage or wherever they need to stand. You know, when somebody has uh, doesn't feel confident to do a driver's test, it's because they're scared. When somebody's about to write an exam and they are not confident to walk in there and write the exam, it's because they're scared. So there's fear, and there's two things to fear. The one is a preparation signal to say, are you ready? Are you prepared? And if you address that, your fear can go away. So if you're writing an exam and you're lacking the confidence and you're scared, the question to ask yourself is, am I prepared enough? When you're doing a presentation, you want to be confident, you have to ask yourself the question, am I ready? Do I know why I'm addressing these people and what I can give them? So when you realize that the opposite of confidence is fear, the thing that we want to do is address the fear and then become courageous. Because by becoming courageous, we can be confident. So it's about understanding your emotions. And this is part of the transformation. Because when you know this, then you can start to use it and that will make a difference. Now the next step to having a successful transformation is your good old body. So many times I've seen people that work so hard to get to the top. And as they're getting to the top, their health is coming down to the bottom. So, you know, as the years go by, they start to sleep less, exercise less, eat worse than they did when they were kids. And as a result of that, things start to go wrong in the body. And they start to experience a lot of fatigue and tiredness. And they become uh, uh, anxious. They become irritable. Because when you're tired and you haven't eaten properly and, and there's chemicals firing off in all different directions in your body, you become irritated. You're not as resilient or as well equipped to deal with things that go wrong. Um, having a, a self-image that doesn't work for you also isn't right. And a lot, a lot of people will say, no, I'm good, I'm fine. But inside, they don't feel good. And from a health perspective, it's not a healthy sign anyway. So we need to look after this body in order for this body to carry us to the success that we want. And some of the things are just really, really basic. You need to look at what are you eating? What are you putting inside of your body? What resources are you giving? Because your body needs nutrients and vitamins and proteins and carbohydrates. It needs just good, healthy, fresh food uh, to be able to sustain itself and to um, work well. And we also need to make sure, especially after we're a certain age, that we are okay. We need to go and do checkups. So there's a whole lot of certain things that you need to look at in your, in your diet, in your uh, how much exercise you're doing. And people get so overwhelmed and I think, oh God, I can't start an exercise program now. I'm too old. I'm too stiff. I'm too sore. Um, because in their minds, they've got a Jane Fonda routine, you know, four times a week, which is just so grueling that, you know, they couldn't be asked to do it. But sometimes the thing that will make a difference is just going for a walk every day. Just a, a gentle walk out there in nature, just enjoying it, calming down a little bit, making sure that you're eating 80% of the time good, making good choices for your body. Because the things that will get you down in the end are things that take years to manifest, but it takes years of wrong eating, bad sleeping, wrong thinking, um, and lack of exercise. So it is really important that part of this transformation to be successful is that you look at yourself holistically and look at that body and say to yourself, what am I doing? How can I improve this in a way that is sustainable for me? Because part of having a transformation is being accountable. And there's no point in doing this if you can't sustain a promise that you've made to yourself. Of course, part of the reason of the transformation is communication. Everything that you think and believe and everything that you that is inside of you gets communicated through language. And it's, only, it's not just spoken word, but it's the unspoken, it's the non-verbals as well. So when we're looking at the transformations, we start to have a look and say, well, what are you communicating to yourself? How are you speaking to yourself? What are you saying? What is the tone of the voice that you're using? Are you saying, you stupid fool? Because that's not very encouraging to somebody. Rather than say, yes, you can do this. Or whatever it is that you would say to encourage yourself. Oh, I just love, 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 love doing this. Or whatever it may be. Listen to the way you're communicating with yourself. Because the way you communicate with yourself will determine how you communicate with others. People will be able to see how you feel about yourself. Because it becomes really, really obvious when you're communicating sad and stressful things to yourself. People will be able to tell what kind of 
behaviors and thoughts you're having by the way you're communicating with them. So you've got to ask yourself, how am I communicating, not just to myself, but to others? So we've got to love ourselves, but we also got to watch out what are we saying and how are we behaving with our families? Because, you know, Richard Bandler says that you have to know somebody really, really well and to love them in order to mistreat them. So if you think about when you're sitting having dinner around the table, and I've seen this so many times, you know, some you, you have some guests over and they spill something on, on your table and they go, oh, I'm so sorry. You think, oh, don't worry about it. But did one of your family members do it when there's nobody around? And you go, oh, look what you've just done. So it's important that you really look at what you're communicating to your family. You know, you've got to really love somebody to be able to, you know, moan at them. And that doesn't make it right. So how are you communicating to the family? Because how are you communicating even with your partners? Your, the children listen and they start to get ideas about themselves and ideas about life and relationships. Communication is just so fundamental. So it's important to ask yourself, what's the face that I'm putting out there? Because every expression tells a story. If you look at all this. So what are you saying about yourself? When you walk into a room, how are you walking in? What are you communicating? And how are you communicating? So now we have done a whole big journey. We have looked at all sorts of parts of life. Here comes the last step. And the last step is reinvent yourself. Now, you don't have to reinvent every single part of you. We're talking about the parts that need to be changed, the parts that limit us, the parts that used to have thoughts that say that I'm not good enough. So those are the parts. You need to pick a time. Now, I like to pick that first thing in the morning time when I'm still in bed and I schedule some snooze time in. So if I need to get up at 6, I'll put the alarm on for 10 to 6 and it gives me 10 minutes. And in those 10 minutes, I lie there in the comfort of knowing that another alarm will go off at six o'clock. And I just love that because I know I can just stay there and it's early. And I ask myself, who do I need to be today? What do I have to do? How do I have to feel? Who do I have to become so I can be the best? Because some days I'm an author, so I need to write. So then I ask myself, if I have to get out of this bed as an author, how does an author get out of bed? How does an author walk? How does an author think and feel about themselves? If I'm going to be a trainer that day, how, how, how do I get out of bed as a trainer? How do I get out of that bed being the best trainer possibly? How would I feel if I was the best trainer? Some days I'm just a mom. And then I ask myself, how do I get out of bed just as a mom? What do I have to do to be the best mom? And I can sit and plan, you know, forecast forward. What does that mean? I've taught this to people that are employees and now they're writing a, a dissertation for another degree. And on certain days, they have to write, you know, the, 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 the dissertation. And they struggle. And I said, get out of bed as an author. And say, so today, I'm this author that writes. And I can, you know, see myself writing easily. And everything that's in my, me my, he my head just flows into the, you know, through my fingers on the keyboard. And it all comes out because I'm this author and I just have creativity flowing right through my body. And they do it and they're so surprised at the fact that they can actually, you know, do it. That they can write so easily. It's time to start writing a new story about yourself. So that you're able to reinvent and create the life that you want. It's time to go through the door to a different life. So it's about you deciding who you want to be, what stories support you, keep those, what stories don't support you, start to change them. Sometimes you just have to change them a little bit. Make sure that you dream and that you have those goals and make sure that your life supports you, that you understand yourself emotionally, that you develop a conscious awareness so that you are able to uh, make those kind of decisions and make those changes that will make a difference. And that way, when you work through a transformation, you have the success that you need. Because, you know, you're not just a single element. It's not enough to just address one part of what you're doing. You have to look at yourself as a huge, big, holistic, magnificent miracle. And when you do that, you start to give yourself the chance. You start to go through all the areas of your life that need to change. 
Now, what I specialize in is in transformational retreats, which are held in Greece. And these are beautiful retreats. I only do four per year with 10 people maximum per retreat. And I'm able to take people through a massive journey. We do mental, we do physical, and we do spiritual change in those seven days. And we really connect and really make big, big changes. But I have a different proposition for you tonight. It's summertime. And summertime is the best time for us to have changes. And the reason for that is because we've got sunlight. And when we've got sunlight, we will naturally feel better. When there's sunlight, we will naturally tend to do more outdoor things. You know, we'll go out to the park, have more picnics, do more walks. We feel more alive. We feel more energetic. And we're not sort of trying to hide from all the elements that are out there. So summertime is always the best time to sort of do any major transformation because we just naturally feel better. Now, here's, here's what I would like you to do is I'd like you to join me in this transformational summer from the comfort of your home. By all means, if next year you want to come with me to Greece, I would love to see you there. But right now here in the UK, I'm doing a three month transformational journey with you. So I will spend three months teaching you and helping you make changes that you want to make because I know what supports people and I know what they need to be successful. And I can help you make those changes and give you that support. So here's what you can get for the three-month transformational summer if you want to join with me. We get three online training webinars. And what happens on those webinars is uh, in the beginning, I address a whole lot of things that help you set up your journey and help you really get started in a really, really positive way. Then halfway through the, the program, um, I do another online training and I address a lot of the things that have come up for people. So when people are having certain limitations or some struggles, then I will sit and take those things and teach what has to be taught around those to give the people uh, that are on the program the support that they need. And then, of course, I'll do another uh, training webinar at the end of the module so that we can then, again, just consolidate and, and just close off everything. And it's, it's really important that whoever does this transformational summer comes and does the training webinars because it just keeps you accountable. It keeps you going. It brings up motivation. You, you, you sort of you know, click back in with me again, and then we're able to just move forward in a way that is positive. Now, you get eight one hour long movies. So there is an eight step to the transformational summer. So therefore, there's eight movies that are all one hour long, and each one will give you a detailed overview of what has to happen, very detailed uh, descriptions of what goes on and takes you through those uh, steps one, one at a time. Now, I've taken the audios, I've stripped the audios out of the movies. So if you want to then listen to the audios after you've seen the movies while you're driving or while you're vacuum cleaning or, you know, whatever you may do, you are able to do so. You get three hypnotic audios and it's important to have these hypnotic audios and to use them because while you're making changes, all sorts of things on the unconscious mind start to unsettle because you're moving your beliefs around and your values and things are starting to change. You start to feel in a different way. And the hypnotic audios are designed in a very specific way to support you through that. They're all, uh, all three of them have got binaural sounds, which means that there's two different sounds coming from both ears, which helps you get into a deep state of relaxation easily and with, uh, with effort, without any effort. And there's layered um, audio um, voice sounds as well, which also facilitate the whole sort of um, trance movement. So it's really important that you use them in, you know, and use them right through the whole program and then of course you get a downloadable journey journal and you get it piece by piece so every week when you get the movie you'll get the journal part that is uh, to that um, week now there is something incredibly magical about writing and when you write what's inside of you so you know watching the movie it will make you and it will help you reflect on things in your life it will there's questions around those movies by the way that will help you reflect. So when you've got all those memories and those feelings and then you write them down, there's something magical about that. And that in itself is one of the key things to the transformation. So it's really important that when you engage in something like that, that you do journal because there's a magical thing that happens between paper and pen. So let me tell you a little bit more about how the modules work. You will be able to get a log on 
and then you go on and you will log in and you'll be able to watch the video online and it takes about an hour. You then have questions that will be reflecting you on that part of the lesson. Then you reflect on, uh, sorry, you download the journal and then from there you'll be able to work on the journal for the rest of that week. Now each video also has a separate audio, like I said to you, that you're able to listen to and you can listen to this while you're traveling or whatever you may do so that you're able to just reinforce the lessons. Now, I know from the things that I've taught and being a trainer and even from my own experiences that when you revisit something, you tend to find and listen and hear something new. There's something, you know, your, your unconscious will take whatever it needs in that moment. So when you go back and revisit something, it will find something new and you'll be surprised how much new material you'll hear every time you listen to the audios. So I do encourage you to watch the movies as often as you like. And you can even do it all over again in six months time and just listen to the audios while you're traveling. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the audios. The first audio you're going to get straight away, and that is about enhanced relaxation. Remember the start of the journey. It starts with you. So therefore, a lot of things are being conjured up. So this is why you're getting the enhanced relaxation to allow yourself to learn how to relax. And you don't have to think about focusing yourself. You just have to switch it on and you can just listen to it. Then halfway through the program, um, we're doing all the goal settings and the dreams. So it's about creating abundance. And abundance is not just about money. It's just in general, all the abundance that you want. So the second CD, and this is a brilliant CD. It's one of my favorite, favorite programs that I've made. So creating abundance comes to you around about uh, the fourth module. And of course, it finishes off with reinventing yourself, of course. So if you have something that you need to prepare for, you just listen to this CD and it will take you there. So let me give you a little bit of um, what each module is all about. So, you know, you're going through the eight modules. The first one, of course, is your story. And like I said, it uh, will talk about um, your childhood, your teenage years, your adult years, about brain development and what happens and how we're able to make decisions. And um, because once you understand that, it starts to make more sense why, for instance, teenagers are so bad at making decisions. Is you know, frontal lobes not developed. But in the program, you'll learn all of that kind of stuff. And of course, you'll also learn all about the, the masks that you wear. And then in the journal, there's all the questions that challenge you to, to question where do you put masks and, and who do you put masks with and so on. The second module is about goal setting and it's got the wheel of life. It's got all sorts of lovely, lovely modules so that you really go in depth into goal setting and, you know, finding out what dreams you've got and which dreams are you going to pick for goals. And the nice thing about this program, and especially on the journal, is that you've got space for 10 different program um, goals. Now, you don't have to do 10 straight away. You can do one or two, but it gives you the space to come back and, and listen to those audios again and work some more with the journal. The third module talks about the dream, the time, the connection, which is about taking that goal and connecting yourself to it and, and really, really engaging with it and making it bigger than yourself. And it's got uh, timelines in there and it's got um, the connection uh, exercise and you get extra uh, audios with that so that you can do them at any time with full instructions and, of course, all the support that you need. The next module is about what are you putting into life and what um, you are, in, how you're engaging, and it teaches you how to start having big, different choices. So you, you look at a situation and say, well, in this situation, I'm frustrated, but what I'd like to do if I could choose is to be indifferent. So it starts to teach you how to do that. It talks about it, and, and through the movie and then the journal, you start to learn how to do it differently. Now, the key thing, of course, with any transformation is what you're learning is that you then come do it you know you actually experience it because then what happens is that the knowledge becomes embodied into your body so therefore that's really really important um the next module is all about emotions and it goes into five different uh, emotions uh, that are negative plus two that are positive to really teach you the background of these emotions so that you can understand what is going on with you and therefore what can you do and then of course again the journal has got so much space to give you all the support to write about this and to really, really understand and know your, your, your signals and, and what goes on with you when you're actually having different emotions. Definitely is going to look at the health attitudes and um, 
it's not about what kind of food to eat or what kind of exercise to do, but it helps you understand a little bit better about what happens in the body and what is it that you're trying to achieve. And it just gently nudges you to start thinking differently and it, it nudges you and challenges you a little bit to make some healthy changes, both physically, you know, with a physical and you know, what you eat and the way that you think and the way that you, you know, your spiritual awareness. So all of that is inside of there. So it looks at the different ways that you can create a healthier body. And part of that is your spirituality. Um, when we're looking at the communication, it's all about how you're relating with friends and family. Um, how, how do we actually communicate what is going on? And understanding what is the message, what is the energy, what is the, 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 the message that you're putting out there in the world. And of course, last but not least, it's the reinvent yourself. This is where we recap everything. We look at values, beliefs, your belief systems, what's holding you back. And what, you know, and we actually have the wheel of life again right at the end because we want to take you through that journey to see how much you've moved and how much you've changed and all of that. So I've got a very special bonus tonight for this transformational summer. I said it's a three month program and of course we've got the eight modules. So you might be wondering, how is this happening? So you get a day's training with me on the 5th of October with your plus one. So I encourage everybody to find a friend or a partner, your wife, your husband, to not do the whole program with you. I mean, they're welcome to, of course they are, but to actually just have somebody to say, hey, you know what, I learned this and what did you think? Or, I thought this about myself. Would you agree? Just somebody to bounce ideas with. So I would like you to come then on the 5th of October, which will be a month after the last module finishes, because the last module finishes on the 3rd of September. So on the 5th of October, a month later, you and your plus one can come and spend a day with me for free. And this will be our celebration to finish. You will have your VIP seats up front reserved for you, and you come and spend the day with me. Now, I don't know yet where it's going to be, probably around London, but I'm going to see where most of the people are coming from to be able to make that decision. So I'll make the most central place um, for the whole of UK, and then I will announce where the 5th of October is going to be. Now, this day normally costs £249, but if you decide to join me on this transformational summer, you come for free with your plus one, because I know how important it is to have that support system with you. And I've got something else extra for you. For the first five clients to pay full for the Transformational Summer Program, you'll get one-to-one -one coaching session with me at a time of your choosing. Now, it's, you know the, the benefit of getting to work with me is that you sit and you can actually ask me all the questions that you need to ask me to understand yourself better, to get the most out of this program and the most out of you. My expertise is in linguistics, and I can hear when somebody is talking um, and describing their problem, exactly how that problem happens, what, what supports the problem and what stops them from moving on. So having that one-to-one -one session with me will help you unlock a lot of frustration that you've had for many years and therefore you're able to get that. Now, the other little bonus that I've got is that the first 10 people to pay in full, I will post a physical copy of the journal. Now, it is a 134-page journal that is beautifully composed and it will allow you to put your thoughts and ideas on paper. It is absolute masterpiece and it is available for sale for those of you who, you know, uh, want it. But for the first 10 people that pay in full, you'll be able to get this as a complimentary and I'll sign it for you um, to start your journey. So let's just recap what does this three month transformational summer. So I will work three months with you. So we do the online training webinars, the first one starting on the 15th of July, with then the eight one hour long movies starting on the 16th and then every consecutive Tuesday thereafter. And these are all one hour long movies that you can download and keep. You've got your eight audios that are from the movies that you can then also download and listen to whenever you want. Your three hypnotic audio CDs, your downloadable journal so that you can put everything that you've experienced in that, which is really important because you can always go back and listen, uh, read what you've written and really see how far you've come. Then, of course, is the one-to-one -one coaching for the first five to pay in full, 10 physical journals for the first 10 to pay in full, and a full day's workshop with me on the 5th of October. So it's a jam-packed offer. 
So I suppose you are wondering what is the price of this? And yes, the best part of all is this of this is the price. You get all of this for only 450 pounds or three payments of 150. So your three month is 150 pounds a month. And it's, it's you know, that's it. There's no nothing hidden. It, it is what it is. So the program begins on the 15th of July with our first online training. The first module is released on the 16th and then every seven days another module is available for you. So where do I sign up? Very, very easy. Go to vickyross.com forward slash transformational summer. And if you can see the trans is like a real trance because that's what happens. You know, in order to get out, you've got to wake up from this trance. Now, signing up there, you'll be able to get all the information that you need to go ahead because on the actual sign up page, there's a video where I explain everything again. There's written information of what you're going to go through every week and what you're going to get and all the bonus prize. So if you would like to speak to somebody from my team, I've got an amazing PA by the name of Teresa. So please take this number down and you can call Teresa and ask her any questions that you have around this program and Teresa will be able to answer them all. So I look forward to working with you. And before we go, if you have any questions right now, let's hear them. So I'm just going to put this out so that I can see the questions. There we go. So there's the details of where you can go and sign up for this program and Teresa's number if you need to speak to her. So if anybody has a question, let me just see. I've got one question here from Jackie. Uh, you've just asked me if I can make it louder and it's already the end of the program. I, I sincerely hope that you could hear me right through. Um, has anybody got any other questions here? Somebody texted me a question before we actually started. And the question was, what happens if I don't keep up on the, you know, week for week and all of that? What happens to the things that get released? What happens is that if you fall behind, it doesn't matter. Um, you'll still be able to go. You'll just have two available modules to look at rather than one um, because they still just release themselves week for week. And the reason that I also gave the gap of the, the four weeks between week eight and 12 is that you're able to catch up for those of you that had fallen a bit behind because life can get in the way and I appreciate that and also to just let things to settle down a little bit so so it's not a problem um, I've got another question here will I be doing this offer again um, this webinar will uh, be done another two times because it will start on the 15th of July so I'll be doing this particular webinar uh, up until that time. So this offer is available until the 15th of July. Um, will it happen again? It won't happen again this summer. So this is the only time that this offer will be available for this year, because obviously it's a, it's a transformational summer program. Um, so I hope that answers the question. And I got another question that somebody emailed me earlier on when they were um, thinking of that. And they were saying, what if they want more support from me? And um, that can always be arranged. So this is what the program does uh, give you. It gives you all of this. But if you want anything extra, whether you come halfway through and you say, well, I want something extra now, just call Teresa and Teresa will then get in touch with me and then we'll sort it out from there. So yes, the answer is yes, of course you can have some more support. And if you want some coaching in between, which is my typical program, we'll run with a breakthrough session that I do face-to-face -face with people at home. And then they do the transformational summer with four coaching phone sessions, as well as I review their answers. So if you want a little bit more than what this particular program offers, it's not a problem um, that can be arranged, of course. So I just want to know, is in, are there any other questions? Because I just had those two questions that came in earlier. Right, so that wraps up the evening. And um, again, if you want to sign up or if you want to know more information, please go to the website to vickyross.com forward slash transformational summer. And or otherwise call my fantastic PA Teresa for on 0790428765. So thank you. I just got a brilliant from some, from Susan. Thank you. I 
I really tr hope that it gave you a lot of information about what you need to be doing to make the changes and to give yourself that because you know what we all deserve to be happy I see so many unhappy people and it's just not necessary um, just go out there and do it and, and start living the life that you deserve and the life that you meant to live and if I can help you I would just absolutely welcome it and it would be an honor to do this with you so thank you very much and thank you for all your praise that i'm getting now i really really appreciate it thank you Teresa, as well and uh, i look forward to hearing from all of you so good night take care and all the best Bye.